Number 81. Predict the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure of each of the following molecules or ions. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't noticed in this whole chapter, right, everything basically comes down to Lewis structures. And there's no exception for this. If you want to find out your electron pair geometry and your molecular structure, you need to first draw a correct Lewis structure. So unfortunately, if you get the Lewis structure incorrect, there could be a big chance that you actually get your electron pair geometry and molecular structure incorrect as well. So if you are not comfortable with your Lewis structures, go back to question number 40. Um, on this playlist in chapter four, there's tons of questions in which I go over specifically how to draw Lewis structures. But since we're on number 81, I'm going to assume that we know how to do them. And you can just check your answers with mine. So I won't tell you specifically how to go into the Lewis structure because we did that already. This, fo this question focuses more on electron pair geometry, molecular structure. So let's get down to it. So for A, the first thing that we have to do is figure out how to draw SF6, right? And that comes from doing your Lewis structure. So you can pause the video if you want, try to draw it yourself and then check with my answer. But the correct Lewis structure for SF6 is sulfur in the middle surrounded by six fluorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are three lone pairs on each fluorine to get the octet of eight electrons for each fluorine. And then sulfur has no lone electrons because it only has six valence electrons. There should be two dots over here. And just remember that sulfur is below period two on the periodic table. So sulfur can have more than eight electrons. It could have the expanded octet. So in this case, sulfur has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons, and that's totally fine. Sulfur can actually have a max up to 12, so we are good. All right, so now how to find the electron pair geometry and molecular structure? Well, we did the hard part. The hard part is doing the Lewis structure, right? And the second hard part would probably have to, I'll probably tell you to memorize each electron pair geometry with its molecular structure. There's no other way around it. So you would have to know the specific names for your electron pair geometries as opposed to your molecular structures. So remember, electron pair geometries are the, the names for what the total uh, molecule is if it had no lone pairs. So linear would always be if you had two um, Total electron pairs, trigonal planar is three, tetrahedral is four, trigonal bipyramidal is five, and octahedral is six. So that's memorization. Now just know that I don't really like to talk about electron pairs. I like to talk a bit in terms of things because it's just easier to kind of understand. So whenever we're doing electron geometry and molecular structure, it's always coming from the central atom. I'll just put CA here. The central atom has things technically around it, right? And things can either be two, two things. It could either be a bond or it could be a lone pair. So in order to get your electron pair geometry correct, you're just basically tallying up the total amount of things. So total number of things will always lead you to your electron pair geometry. Then you single in and say how many lone electrons or lone pairs there are. That will lead you to your molecular structure, all right? So your lone pairs will always equal your molecular structure, and the total number of things is always equal to your electron pair geometry. So let's look at our central atom. In this case, it's sulfur. How many total things are surrounding sulfur? Well, like we said before, we had a bond here. That's one, two three, four, five, and six. So there's a total of six things. So that means that your electron pair geometry for this uh, compound, you go down to six and it would be octahedral. All right. So your electron pair geometry would be octahedral. And now your molecular structure, you just see, okay, well, 
out of all of these things, right, out of these things that are surrounding the central atom, right, the central atom is sulfur, this guy. Um, were there any lone pairs? Were there any dots? No, right? They were all bonds. So in this case, the molecular structure had to deal with zero lone pairs. So in this case, the electron pair geometry is the same as the molecular structure because there was no lone pairs. There was no dots in the central. So electron pair geometry was octahedral and the molecular structure in this case was octahedral. So that gets rid of A. B. Pause the video if you want. See if you can draw the Lewis structure for PCL5. But PCL5 is phosphorus in the middle, surrounded by five chlorines. One, two, three, four, five. Just like in the other example, all the chlorines should have three lone pairs around it. And the phosphorus does not have any lone pairs. So that's how you should have drawn it correctly. So we get something like this. So let's tally up the total number of things around the central atom because that's how we get the electron pair geometry. For phosphorus, there looks like there's one bond here, two, three, four, five, and there's no lone pairs. So there's a total of five things. So that will bring us to our electron pair geometry because electron pair geometry is the total number of things. And we're looking for number five. So five would be trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal bipyramidal. And then your molecular structure only deals with if you had lone pairs. So whether it has zero lone pairs, one lone pair, two, three, or four lone pairs, that's your molecular structure. But in this case, right, phosphorus doesn't have any lone pairs, right? It just had five bonds. So just like before, it had zero lone pairs, so lone electrons. So in this case, it would be the same exact thing. Electron pair geometry and molecular structure is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, so that gets rid of B. Next, so I'm going to just erase um, A for you guys. I'll keep B up, just so that if you want to keep uh, copying. All right, so let's get down to it. C, B, E, H, 2. You could pause the video if you want to try to see if your Lewis structures are good, but it should be beryllium in the middle surrounded by two hydrogens, no lone pairs. So let's find out the total number of things surrounding the central atom. In this case, it's beryllium. And you have two things. You have one lone pair here. Uh, sorry, one bond and one bond. So that's a total of two things or two electron pairs, right? So that means that your electron pair geometry would be in the two, which is linear. And in this case, the same thing as before, right? Beryllium had no lone pairs, right? You don't see any dots. So for your molecular structure, it has zero lone electrons, right? So it has to be the same. This would still be linear. And that gets rid of C. Now, Let's move on. I'm going to erase B to set up for the last one. CH3 with a positive sign. So you could pause the video if you want to get the Lewis structure, but you should have carbon surrounded by three hydrogens. And since it is a charge, you have to bracket it and say that it's a plus. And no lone pairs in the middle. So, how many things total around the central atom? In this case, it's carbon. One, two, three. So, three total things. So, that means that your electron pair geometry would have to be number three. And three would be trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. And now you take into consideration if you have any lone pairs for your molecular structure. But, just like before, if you look at carbon, right? I mean, there's there's literally no no dots here, right? There's no dots like this. So zero lone pairs, just like A through C, zero lone pairs. So it has to be the same exact thing. So this also would be trigonal planar. And that's it. D is done. So this one got your feet a little bit wet as to understand electron pair geometry versus molecular structure. Um, but yeah. 
it all comes from Lewis structures. So if you can't get those down, just go back. I promise you guys will get them if you just go back to uh, starting at number 40 and you should be good. All right. So if you want more practice, hang tight, because if you're on the playlist, we got more practice coming to you in three, two, one. And if you want, click subscribe. See you in five seconds.